Hello, so in this video, we are in the garage working on the F-350. So this is a voluntary thing. So I'm gonna swap out these front springs for the heavier duty springs. I believe they come off of the F-450, F-550. 7,000 pounds are the stiffest springs that you, you can get that'll fit in this truck. So what I'm gonna do here, and I did it on a prior truck, I did it on a, uh, two, my 2015, is I don't, the truck has a good rake to it right now. Um, you can see there's definitely, I think there's about a two inch from front to back. And I don't mind that because I use this truck to tow. I'd like to kind of stiffen up this front suspension a bit. So what I ended up doing right now, um, when I ordered the truck, I, I opted for the upgraded spring option or the service spring option, whatever you want to call that. And I was thinking that it would um, go up to the 6,000 pound front springs, which I believe are the heaviest springs you would get in a F-350. When I got the truck, I found out it has the 5,600 pound front springs in it. So what I did is I went ahead and I ordered <laughs> the 7,000 pound springs. I did this to a, I did the same thing in a, in a prior truck that had the plow package. I, put, I upgraded from you know, the prior truck had the 6,000 pound springs. I went to the 7,000 pound springs. It actually raised it about three quarters of an inch um, from the, the stock height. And believe it or not, I preferred the way it drove. So the front end stayed a lot more level. There's less roll in corners. So I marked 43 inches on, on both sides. I didn't do the rear, um, the rear because I'm not anticipating anything's gonna change with that. What I'm hoping for is I'm hoping for potentially, again, maybe three quarters of an inch lift, but more than anything, what I really wanna do is I just, I kinda wanna firm up that front suspension a bit, maybe get it a, a tad more level, but again, depending on if, if it goes anything higher than an inch. So if I get an inch or more out of the front, I'll end up switching to the rear spring blocks on, that came on the 17 through 19 which is what gave you that extra couple inches of height in the back. So I know that's a lot to digest. We're gonna jump into it and um, I'll, I'll pick you back up when we're closer to making some moves. All right, so we got the truck jacked up. It's on the jack stands. We got the jack here. We're gonna use a jack to support the axle. Um, use a jack to support the axle. It's not there yet. Um, for when we unbolt the shock here. So unbolting the shock should let this, you know, this drop down. Some things to pay attention to are these cables here. We may have to take the bracket off to allow enough, enough slack um, to drop this. Hopefully the spring will just pop out. If not, we might have to kind of address this bracket too. But yeah, we'll go from, go from there. So should be pretty straightforward. Wheels off, one more bolt for the shock, and then potentially this bracket, lower the axle and pull that spring out and replace it with the heavy duty one. All right, so we got the spring out. Uh, we had to use a pry bar a little bit. You might be able to see it in the, uh, actually probably won't see it in the time lapse, but. So this is the old spring and the new spring. It's gonna be tough to tell from the photo, but they're exact uh, same height. Maybe we'll see a difference. One is um, thicker than the other, but now the, we had to compress this a little bit, but we just were able to use a pry bar for that. The <laughs> tough part's gonna be getting this one back in, but. Um, one other thing we had to take off was just to give enough clearance to pull the, the spring out was the, the nut for the track bar, but um, right there. So installation is gonna be reverse of removal. Let's get started. All right, so what we ended up doing is taking both tires off. Um, we had to undo these, undo the um, sway bar ends. 
Um, I took the other tire off too, just so we could drop the axle lower. We got the other spring in, um, everything was supported with the jack, but we did end up just to avoid, you know, snagging any of these or, or stretching or kinking any of those lines. We did undo the brackets here. So a little more than I thought, but if you have a spring compression tool, you probably wouldn't have to do that. But um, these 7,000 pound springs, you're not, you're not moving, um, you know, unless you have that tool. So we'll be good. The other thing is, is there's a stop here. You wanna make sure that the, the spring is up against that stop. So twisted wise, you wanna make sure it's locked in. And then um, obviously this bracket or this rubber stop here has a specific spot that's supposed to be in. So what we're gonna do now is jack this back up, put everything back in place, get everything bolted together, and we'll see what the final stance looks like. Yeah. So we are all done. Um, so there's what the truck looks like. I know it's gonna be a little deceiving. I'll throw a tape measure on it for you. 43 before at this line. So you can see we're at just about 44 and a quarter. And um, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's 43. So we gained an inch and a quarter there just from the spring swap. So that was it. So um, let's actually take a look at this crease so you can see the level is. So, we're at about just over, so 43 and an eighth to the center, you know, to this crease of that line. We'll go to the back, Jay's there, and we're at 44 and a quarter, yeah, 44 and a quarter about. So we got actually about uh, an inch and an eighth, so there's about an inch rake. And I think you remember me in the beginning of the video saying if that lifted the front anything over an inch or an inch or better, I'd be putting the rear blocks in from the 2019. So this video just turned into a two-part video. So the next part, what we're going to do is this has a two-inch block in it that came with the anything 20, 20 and up. So um, I already talked to the dealer. So every every modification to this has been Ford factory parts. So you know the tremor balance, um, the front front coil over. If you're looking to just, you know, I'll take this out for a ride. I'm gonna take it out for a ride now, but you know, kind of I'll put a review in the second part of the video of how it how it drove. But I know from the previous trucks, I actually like the the way it handled better with the stiffer front front coil over. But because I tow, I definitely want a little bit more rake. So I, I want this up another inch or so, just because you know once it's loaded, I want the truck to ride closer to level and not look like it's dragging ass so yeah we'll come back at you when I get those parts in they should be in on Monday so that's a few days from now so that modification shouldn't be too bad this one actually took probably about an hour and a half and that was including some you know messing around with the GoPro and some uh, trying to get just kind of get our bearings straight with it but very easy. I think the quote I got to, for labor to do, the cheapest quote I got for labor was around $250. So, you know, it doesn't take much to do it. And I think it was definitely worth the, you know, doing it, doing it ourselves. But another note is that front spring will probably definitely settle a little bit. So I said we got an inch and an eighth. We'll see, we'll see what it looks like in, you know, the next couple thousand miles. But I do know that it's too close for comfort and, um, I'm gonna just go back, I'll put that put that rear block in, gain at least another inch and a quarter, inch and a half maybe from the rear. But yeah, stay tuned and that'll be part two.